Hello and welcome everybody to Quality Sewing and Vacuums Sew so Fun um, Facebook Live today. Today we have Cindy and Gail who have been all over the Seattle area this month uh, presenting their uh, their wonderful show today where if you haven't make it, it in person to one of their really amazing classes you should come because there's fun friends and prizes <laughs> we are going to have some prizes today though too just in case you weren't able to um, catch us locally or if you're out of the state sometimes we have some people checking in from germany and stuff in wow. australia a couple of times All yeah the world. which is really cool so anyways uh this is um our so fun program and what we do here is we um have our educators and they make a bunch of really amazing products for you to to see and they talk about it and we have 10 stores in the Seattle area we do 30 classes and this is the this is number 30 the survey last one so as it, you are a part of our so fun program when you become a member you also enjoy 20 percent off uh, the notions that they are showcasing these are things that we don't usually carry in our stores right these are really fun specialty products uh, so what you see today it will be on sale the 20 percent off all the way through next thursday april 4th uh, so with that um we are gonna at the very end we'll do two prize drawings so make sure that you leave a comment down below like us say hey i'm checking in from arizona or or arlington wherever you are and we'll make sure that you get entered into our prize drawing at the very end so with that i'm going to turn it over to cindy and gail thank you thank you well, you're gonna oh, okay we're gonna start out with our tumbler quilts and this is our um, book that has lots and lots of tumbler quilts are really interesting because you use one or two generally shapes and you cut them out and put them together and you can mix them up and just tumble along right? that's right that's right <laughs> so in the book it's all these fantastic templates where's the templates so you have the templates and you can use all of these you can trace these out you can cut them on template plastic which we brought in and this template plastic is really nice you can cut it with just ordinary scissors I used my everyday scissors and they just nice sharp edges and you can also run it through your scan and cut. And we'll show you some of that. For, because some of these have lots of different shapes, but some, some of them that are kind of common, mm -hmm. we brought in this Tumblr template. And this Tumblr template uses strips and it goes from six inches wide to two and a half inches wide. I'll put that up there and it's kind of hard to see there you go and on here we added our little sticky um oh here let me show the yeah these little grip parts these grip parts are really nice they really stick well and you get 12 24 of each size the 24 yes and so the big heart the middle of it pops out and you have a little heart. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to show you how you use this and then Gail's going to sh show you how you put these together. So when you cut your fabric, I just, because it's me and I know how I am, I always cut my fabric a sixteenth of an inch wider than it calls for because from you're cutting everything on the bias and for me it's easier to cut off that sixteenth of an inch. So the first thing you do is and there's direct, really good directions in the package, is you line up your strip width, and then there is a little tiny, let's see if we can see it here, little tiny uh, dotted lines here. You're going to line up 
that dotted line with your quarter, your corner, and you're going to cut that off. And then you're going to turn this upside down and to have the short end towards you, and you line it up. And I always line up my top. I make sure that top is lined up. So you're going to line up this edge and the top. You cut that off. And then you get a little dog ear. And this is, whoops, I cut that too big. That was my problem. You cut, you have this little corner that you're going to cut off. And the next one, and Gail's going to show you why that's so important to cut that off when you start to sew it together. Then you're going to turn it right side up. Do the same thing on this one. And cut that dog ear off. And then you just keep doing this back and forth, back and forth. And you're going to do it with all your fabric until you get the number of uh, cuts that it calls for. You want yep. to? My, yep, I will okay. sew those together. So Gail's got some other ones that she's already got prepared. Do you? Uh, no, they're all okay. there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, then I'll do this one. I'll do another one here. I don't know if we can. Here, let me let me cut it. Cut me a gray one. Cut you a gray one. All the right. Contrast is so can I have the? Yes, I need can. the other dog ear. Oh, cut off there. So cutting off the dog ears is really important to, for lining this up. Yeah. So this is the littlest, ittiest, bittiest um, piece of fabric that makes the most difference in all the world, I'll tell you. So, which way are we going? Okay, so I have these two pieces, right, that I'm going to sew together. And if I sewed them with the wide piece on both of them facing the same direction, I'm going to start turning a corner. I'm going to start curving, right? And that's not what I want to do right now. I want to have one up and one down so that it makes a straight line because I want a nice straight row across my quilt. Um, but lining these edges up, if I don't have these little dog ears, can be um, very difficult. So that little dog ear lets me know exactly where to place those fabrics so that I can get a perfect quarter of an inch. When I um, do my sewing, and all right. Yep. Ah, book control must be plugged in all the way. Oh, okay. <laughs> you want to see from this side? Yeah. Oh, well, there you there go. We go. <laughs> I was trying to get out of your way. All right. So I can do that again if you want, but you know, same thing. So quarter of an inch all the way down here. And when I open those up, that is going to give me an even edge on the top and the bottom so that when I do my rows um, I don't have kind of um, stair steps right it doesn't go up and go down like that so if I build the quilt in rows all the way across then I don't have any Y seams so I don't have any um, need to go into a corner so all of them are straight lines all the way across so the ruler works just wonderful. So since you're going to use um, this ruler in both this fashion and then this fashion, you need to put the little sticky things on your ruler, both on the top and on the bottom. So it's very, very important um, to have that ruler not slip around on you. And on both sides. Yes, yeah, front and back. 
So uh, this ruler does create eight different sizes. So where's my sizes back here? I'm gonna move around to the back side here and we'll go back to the other camera. But we have the largest and the smallest. And then everywhere in between is right here. So I've got eight different sizes for that ruler and I can make a large project or a small project um, or whatever I'd like. So I can get a big one done fast or I can put some complexity into that quilt. So this book has so many different um, types of quilts. When you focus in on your color on your quilt, if you look at these two samples, if you focus on the purple, then you get an hourglass shape. If you focus your eye on the orange, then you get more of that lava lamp tumbler type um, or Chinese lantern type shape. So the different shapes and how they're put together with color is how we got all um, the variety of different designs in the quilts. So let's take a look at quilts. So right here behind me, I have one from the book called Magenta Jam, and you actually build units with color. So they look, um, you know, like they belong together. And then those are spaced out um, to give you a look. And you have blue in the background that you're using, you know, to separate those units. So it's all about the color. When I was building this quilt, I did use a product that is called Cool Pins. And these are ABC 123 pins, and they are numbered. There are four sets of pins in here, and they are numbered um, 0 through 25 and A through Z. And this let me build my rows and mark them off so I could get them from my floor, which is where I laid everything out, to the sewing machine, to the ironing board, and keep everything in order so that when I put the quilt together, it is, you know, laid out the way it's supposed to be. So that was very, very helpful. Um, <clears throat> the tumbler or um, Chinese lantern kind of look is what you see mostly on this purple table runner right here. And the, all of these are the same shape piece, right? It's just how you use the color. These are in pairs and the pairs are matched up along the long edge and they were cut on a striped fabric. And I matched the straps, uh, stripes so that when I cut them both out, um, the stripes would be in the same place. And I just used the pinks and matched up um, the long side and all of the others are always also done in pairs, so you get that color block look. And that was called softly tumbling, right? Um, right. This was a could be. Yeah, I think yeah, it was, it was a table tumbling. run table runner that we did. And this, let's talk about this one over here. This so this is peaches and cream, and this is one one size one. Uh, just two different color. I used greens, and I had six greens, so I had to get a little interesting. But you had, I got 66 greens and um, 120, 132 grays. And it's just back and forth, back and forth. And if you look at it closely, because I didn't have enough to do a really random, so I started row one, and then row two started with the second one, and I just followed that round, and then I flipped it upside down, and did the same thing. And if you look really closely, my gray is Wonder Woman. And on half of them, she's right side up. In the top half, she's always right side up. And on the bottom, she's upside down, 
But if you flip the quilt over, she's still right side up and upside down. This was really easy. It went together really fast. Um, and then I just backed it and had it backed in Minky and had it, uh, send it out to my long armor mm -hmm. and had it done. So this was, it went really fast. So you used the uh, physical ruler template to I make... I used the physical ruler. This was the five and a half inches. Now, if you wanted to make it smaller, you could use a smaller size. It sure. called for the five and a half. You could make it larger. You could use a six inch, um, whatever size you want. Okay. So for the one in the back, I used the patterns that were in the book and the template plastic. And I just wanted to mention that when you purchase this package, you get four sheets in here that are 14 by 20. So you've got lots and lots of template plastic to play with. And she did mention that you can cut it out on the scan and cut. So you can get really, really intricate designs that you can use for stencils or anything else. Um, so this template plastic doubles as, uh, you know, multiple things, right? Quilt um, styles, you can use it for painting, you can use it for anything, so. And it, it holds the, the, if you write on it, the pen does not smudge. Oh, so you don't okay. have to worry about smudging. All right, and then the final uh, project that we did out of there is called the bonus project. This is one is just a little bit different. And this is the game board over here. And it's doubled, but you build the background first. So this black and white piece was quilted with the backing, and then you have a blank slate. And then you start with all your fun fabrics. And this could be a racetrack for a little um, you know, car mat um, for the play yard, or it could be you know, a game board or a fun um, I spy quilt. So each piece was cut and then appliqued over the top of the background. When you put your skinny to skinny sides, you start to turn corners and make curves. I mentioned that at the beginning. Then if you flip around and you do one with the fat side up here and the skinny side up here, then you straighten out and then you start going the other direction. So you can build, you know, um, a squiggle type quilt. So. Very, very fun. Lots of fun projects in that book. All right, Cindy. Want to go to the jacket? Yep, we'll go to the jacket. So the next okay. item we have is our flat iron jacket and coat. From the sewing workshop. Yes, and yep. This is from the sewing workshop. It has a short and a long version. It has pockets or no pockets. You can choose. And the size range is from extra small to double extra large. So, so you want to show yours? Or what sure, okay. sure. Whoops. Well, there we go. So here is a winter jacket type weight. Now the pattern itself is not lined, um, but you can certainly add some fabric to the collar. So the inside and the outside of the fabric are going to show. So make sure that you have something that's pretty on both. Um, so I added this inside because I was not really happy with um, the back of the fabric. Added the pockets. This is the short version. It has um, a high low on the hem that is intended. And it'll just be a nice uh, winter jacket with that floppy collar. And that's a large, correct? This is cut as a large, yes, and it does fit me very, very well. So then I did the coat, so the long version, and I did not put, I used a knit, and this is a large. If you're going to go with a knit, you really want to go down a size because this gets very um, drapey. <laughs> it's very drapey. <laughs> and so I didn't put the pockets on, but I liked the back of my material, so it was fine because you only have, you only see really the hem. So this was um, very easy to do, very quick and easy. Her patterns are really kind of, um, they're, they're unstructured. And I think it took me like two hours to sew it all up and might add some, like an, uh, a brooch or something there yeah, or, that or would a snap, be a um, a pin to use it. And, um, but it's all one length and it does get fairly long. So you do want to check if you're going to do it in a, in a knit, go down a side. Yeah. So then 
I had an inspiration from hers and also from last month, right? We did some um, turning bedspreads or turning blankets into a garment. So I went off to the discount store and found a blanket. This one happened to be 90 by 90, so I had plenty of fabric. And I even just kept the hanger, right? So <laughs> I used the pattern to make this into kind of a lounge robe or a house coat. Um, sometimes you have those blankets that you just don't want to take off. Well, now I don't have to. So this was an ombre. I really am attracted to the ombre fabrics. So I have a very comfortable, um, and I could even wear it out in public, you know, why not? So go to the mailbox, go to the grocery store. Um, I'll add pockets. The white was the top of the blanket. Um, but the ombre goes all the way down to the bottom. So I've got lots and lots of room to cuddle up on the couch. So, you know, don't overlook those fun, fun fabrics. That is a good economical way of getting a large but amount of fabric. If you have a blanket, the favorite blanket that you yeah, can get rid yeah. of, but it doesn't work sure. as a blanket anymore. Even a quilt. Yeah. Um, I was able to keep the hem from the, blank, uh, the, t the blanket, the existing blanket on the bottom and the sides, and then all I had to do was hem the top. So and very, it, does, it does have two um, quick and easy projects. Yes, and it has a it has um, instructions for just doing conventional seams, which is what I did. So just a nice conventional seam, or she has um, there's directions in there to do kind of a full flat felled seam. Yeah, like a lap seam, and I did that with this because two layers of this really really heavy coat fabric would have just been too stiff. So you actually, um, this fabric doesn't ravel, so you trim off the seam allowances and then you stack them up like this and sew them back together. So And all those directions are in there. Yeah, yeah, very well done pattern. Yeah. All right. Here's your... Okay, so we're going to go to the splash fabric. And if you have not used splash fabric yet, you are in for a treat. Uh, this is my new obsession. We brought in these four for this. It's nice. It's a Seattle, local Seattle company. That's it. Let's put the black on there. It's a local Seattle company. And it is a treated cotton. And it doesn't feel like laminate. And it sews beautifully. And you can... Um, iron it on the front and the back. I have yet to make it melt. And we just had a lot of fun making projects with this. It's 58 inches wide, so you get a lot. And on the back she has where you can get two adult aprons and, and different things here. But it, you sew it like cotton. You might use a little bit longer um, stitch length. And I use just regular piecing thread for mine. I had no problems. Yeah, same with me. You know, I just, it acts just like regular cotton. I didn't feel I needed to um, change up much of all, I know, of anything. And it just is very soft and pliable. <laughs> and so it, 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 it feels It's suggested like for a, 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 a non-stick needle. I just use a titanium and it works just fine. Okay, so we start with the patterns that we played sure. with. Sure. So we did the ultimate toddler bib. And this was, it was reversible, and this was a lot of fun, and it goes together really quick. We have them right here on the corner. Oh, we have them on the corner. That's where they are. That's the back. How about the front? How about the front? <laughs> <laughs> so I did it according to the directions, and I used the splash fabric. And I just used the green on either side, and then just changed the pockets. And you could put stitching down the pockets if you wanted. And then um, did binding, and the binding... It's interesting when you bind it. So you, you bind the sleeves first, and then to get the whole thing, you put them together and stitch across with the binding. And then you just do a binding here, and it works really... This took an hour, hour and a half, maybe. Um, great. You could... It's very easy. You could upsize this if you wanted to and have it for... Um, the kids, when they paint, things like that, if they're past that, that they need it to eat, but they'll always need it for painting. Of course. So I did change things up slightly. <laughs> no. I can't. <laughs> I you know, never I can't, do. <laughs> I can't do it exactly the same, right? Same pattern size, same all of that. Um, but instead of binding all the outside edges, I did uh, sew them right sides together. 
and then flip them and top stitch them. Then the final thing, I turned them through the neckline, added the splash self binding for the neck. So I still have a tie. Um, but to create those armholes, um, I used some snaps that we brought in today called finger snaps. And we'll talk about those in a little bit. Um, but that way I can snap in the arm when I want to, but I can also unsnap it. I also did reversible. So we have um, bunnies and grass on one side and we have grass and bunnies on the other side. So, now, while my two-year-old granddaughter does not usually eat with a bib anymore, I do. So, I took that same pattern shape, I modified it slightly, I rounded the corners just a little bit, and I made the neckline larger. I put um, the fold-over elastic around the neckline and put flannel on the back. The flannel is so that it will stick to my shirt and the splash is so the food won't stick to the bib. Um, but the idea is that I can have that on my shirt when I sit at home in front of the television and my food doesn't land on my chest. So you can make this longer, you can add um, a pocket if you want, but the splash is just wonderful stuff. You may have an adult in your life, including yourself, that, you know, needs a shirt protector. It is no longer a bib. It is a shirt protector. But the pep, so. the, the, it's so, there's only one size, but it's so easy to size this up and down. Sure. That you make it any size you want. Yeah. So the next pattern that we did with what, what um, the okay. splash well, we kind of okay. mix things up all over the place, right? But this is the Make It Perfect Sun-Kissed Hat. And this is a sun hat, but according to the pattern, it's made out of cotton. And let's see, we have Cindy's hat over here on yep. the... And yours. Yep. So I did mine by the, <laughs> by the pattern. And there's a theme here, yeah. right? <laughs> And so it uses, this is the adult large, and it uses two fat quarters. And you still have a little bit left out. And it's really simple. You use interface, and I just used normal interfacing. And when you put it on, and you have a ponytail hole. Well, I don't have a ponytail, but Gail does. Yeah. And it called for Velcro here. And I don't like Velcro near my head oh, here. Yeah. So that's, I use the snaps the finger snaps that we brought in for that. And so I've got a purple with dots, or I've got a pink. Well, there you go. All ready for summer. All ready for summer. This has already been uh, called for. My granddaughter. Spoken already, for? Yes, my <laughs> granddaughter wants it. <laughs> yeah, well, my granddaughter's getting this one as well. Um, but she's really, really into sheep. And so one of our splash fabrics was these little um, sheep and lambs and stuff. So I have splash fabric on the outside rather than a cotton. And I put a fuzzy on the inside to go with the little lambs. So um, again, I did the medium size. And, um, you know, I may have gone a little crazy with the snaps, but <laughs> hey, they gave me eight, so I used eight. So this is adjustable. You know, I can still adjust it down. Um, there's nothing more annoying than um, when you do a baseball cap and you've got two little snaps fastened and then you've got all these little wings hanging out. So I just added extra snaps to, uh, you know, tack them all down. So we still have that little ponytail hole and... Um, generous sized cute little hat so you know there's there's water in Washington no matter what season you're in and uh, there's sun in the winter so right. we've got splash and well so we use the splash quite a bit we have today. a question yeah, we have a question that um, Denise is asking if the splash would work as an apron absolutely oh, definitely yes there's actually on here she has you want to repeat what I said? Okay. She wants to know um, if the splash fabric can be used as an apron. And there's actually direction. There's, there's a pattern on here. So there's also, you know, she kind of on the packaging says that one yard of this fabric will make either two aprons, three tote bags, 
two kids' aprons plus two bibs plus two lunch, lunch bags. So, you know, there's quite a bit. 36 by 58 is a large chunk of fabric. So, yes. I have never made a hat before. I don't know if you have, but I've never made a hat. And again, this was a quick and easy project. Short afternoon, it went together fine. Yes, yes, they go together fast. So the sun-kissed hat, and it does have four sizes, small, medium, large, and extra large. Okay, now the next item, we'll do the, the mat. Oh, yes. Oh, you want to do a mat, okay. Um, this lunch mat is something that I had all this fabric and decided I just had to come up with something for my lunch. Now, I believe that we've already done a how do I for this. So if you'd like to see the directions um, step by step, there should be um, a PDF of that as well available. So um, if you travel, you know, to have your lunch or whatever. So we have splash on both sides. Now you could put whatever you want on the outside. I put splash so it wouldn't get dirty. I could clean it up. Um, but I was also told, you know, it is a little bit slippery. So if you have a position like in the car and uh, you need it to grip, then maybe you want to put something else on the outside. But splash on the inside is definitely good. So I have snaps on one side and I have D-rings and a handle on the other side. So there is fusible fleece inside, which is a product we'll talk about in a bit. And yes, we'll get back to the snaps too, right? We'll show you how those work. So I can s adjust this to either have, you know, a small lunch or a large lunch. If you space your snaps out the same distance, then you'll always have that ability to um, snap them in any position. And then I'm just going to tuck those in and bring up my handle, run it through two D-rings and back through a single D-ring. Does that bring us back to all those belts in the <laughs> years ago, right? And then that's my carry handle and my fastener all in, in the same thing. So wonderful use of that fabric. And I always have a clean place to eat. There you go. Mm -hmm. All right. And then last item that we did with the splash. This is just a portable little tray. So I have splash on both sides of this one as well green and bunnies. The bunnies go on the inside for this one. Um, you could use this for a myriad of different things indoors. Um, the idea that I had seen was a larger mat with um, a potting station in here so you could repot your plants. But I have two snaps in each corner and when I snap them together it makes a tray. So I have one more snap to mount which I'm going to do for you folks right here and you can see how easy they are to install. So it makes a little tray. When you're done with everything, then you can um, wipe it up and put it away. So for this tray, like I said, I need one more snap. And the snaps that I'm talking about are called finger snaps. Can we put that up? Yeah. Thank you. Do that. Um, and they come in four colors. They come in black and white and pink and navy. And these are all installed with just your fingers, right? So they are a plastic small snap. And inside the package, you get eight sets. There are two sides, you know, one has to snap into the other, but the caps for the back are all the same. So keep that cap there. And I need this half to install over here. So we'll put the rest of these away. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah. Now I need a hole first, right? You can use an awl, punch a hole in your fabric. Um, there's a little tiny piece of template plastic over here somewhere. Yes, it's shaped like a square. Oh. Yeah, maybe not. So I did cut myself, I used that template plastic, it's okay, um, to make myself a little corner template here so I knew where my position needed to be for my snaps. So all four corners were exactly the same. Um, but then I have another product called the OESD Perfect Punch. And this is a self-drilling punch, which means when I put pressure on the handle, 
it will make the shaft spin, which means I don't have to hammer it with another tool. So all I need to do, I already have a hole here. I don't want to poke another one. I'm going to use this. This is double layer marine vinyl, like couch stuff, right? I'm going to push and it's going to drill down and it's going to poke holes in my vinyl. We'll do that one more time push and it drills and I'm not putting very much pressure on there and it gets a nice clean hole. There's three different size bits. We'll get back to that with yep. the grommets. Um, and they're stored right here in the handle. So it's a very, very handy item. But I don't want to punch onto my table or my good rotary cutter mat. So another product is the little OESD mats. It comes in a package of two and is just big enough for the punch. So once I've got a hole, all I need to do is put the cap through one side and the posts are long enough to go through a couple layers of fabric. They went through my splash and my fuzzy stuff for my hat. And then I just place the other piece right there and I snap together with my fingers. So I don't know if you could hear that, but it's just one little pop and it's installed. It's not coming apart and we're done. So there is my final snap. No special tools needed. No special tools at all. No hammering, yeah. no pinching, no, um, you know, pliers, um, which is another nice thing about the punch. You can put the, uh, a hole in the punch in the middle um, of something. Right, because you don't have a throat that you're trying right. to get through. With Some of those um, punch handle. pliers, you can only get so far into the edge of something. So uh, very handy. Okay, when this is all done, I'm going to um, wipe it down and roll it up and we have our let's get the roll yes we have our terrific yeah. tape so can i have the package oh. and this thread and the thread yes all right so this is terrific tape and this comes in a roll like this it is 50 feet it is half an inch and it is a plastic product that only sticks to itself. It is reusable. I'll just get another one. Oh, here we go. Okay. All right. So this is what came off of it. So it's really hard to see because it's clear, um, but I just have to wrap it around and stick it to itself. It's not gonna leave a residue on my item. So stabilizers, threads. Bobbins. Bobbins, um, you name it. You, it needs to get stuck together. Fabric, if you have scraps of fabric or um, anything, you know, even your splash fabric, you can roll it up. And charger, I use it for oh, my, yes. my chargers. The cables. The charger cables. Yeah. Now, one lady told me in one of the stores that if it starts to lose its stickiness, you rub it through your hair on both sides. <laughs> <laughs> and it, gets, it, it starts to stick to itself. Again. Uh, I don't know about that. I don't know. I haven't had it lose its stickiness, but that's what she told me. So Yeah. So yeah. it would do 100 spools. One roll will do 100 spools of thread. So it is a, a wonderful little thing. So terrific tape Maybe. from the Gypsy Quilter, um, half inch by 50 feet. Yeah. Yes, that's a lot. All right. Oh, I think it's your so, turn. Okay. So we're going to go to, we brought in the Pucker Up Project Tote. And I love making bags. Yes. I think one reason I like making bags is there's no fitting. You don't have to make any adjustments unless you want to. Right. So they're always going to fit. So this is the Pucker Up Project Tote. And I use the fusible fleece in mine because that's what the pattern called for <laughs> that we brought in. And this is really nice. Um, this is 22 by 36 inches. And the bag has two sizes, and this will make the entire, that's make the large size with a little left over. So the bags are over here. Yep. So I did both sizes. I did the petite. And I used splash fabric on the bottom. And then just some fabric that I had I've had this fabric forever, and it has lots of pockets inside, lots of slip pockets, and an optional zipper pocket. To me, zipper pockets are not an option. They're, they're a necessity. One. Yeah. They're a necessity. And they just fold up like this. 
And so this just has a fusible fleece in here and it stands up pretty well, actually. Um, I am gonna put, I think, a snap up here to keep it from falling over. And we brought in these grommets and these are the sewn, the, these are screw in grommets and we'll show you how to do those in a little bit too. Um, and there's, you use eight, so there's, and there's four to a pack. And this is something I had never done on a bag before. Normally, you, you know, you turn a bag, you birth it, they call it, and then you bring it and you're trying to get, so only the lining is on the lining side and the, and what they have you do is you bring up a little bit of the lining, turn it over, and it's a self-bound. So, so it I, gives you a little detail. Yeah, it gave a little detail. I really liked this. This was, this, like I said, this is the petite. And then I did the large as well. And so again, it's got all these wonderful slip pockets. And generally when I do slip pockets, I always do the triple stitch so that they don't um, burst on me mm -hmm. because I always put too much in. Sure. But they kind of fold up like a lunch bag. And again, these were, again, a quick and easy. The pattern is really, the directions I thought were very well done. Yes, and I did follow them almost all, all the way. <laughs> the only thing I did deviate was the line, uh, the inside, right? The Instead of the fusible fleece, I used the Bozal double uh, fusible interfacing so it's kind of that foam yeah, product like two, the, yeah you can see how and so it just has a little bit more you know structure stand up structure yeah um, but again the slip pockets and the zipper pocket inside were wonderful um, a longer handle would absolutely be very easy to do so that you would be able to put it up over your shoulder rather than just carry it as a purse um, but i believe my next one will be the large size splash on the inside and then a long handle so I can just take it to the beach and throw whatever wet I want inside. You could so. do the whole thing in splash. You absolutely easily. could. Yeah, to, absolutely. To take could. it to the beach and throw in um, the food or the wet swimsuits. Sure. On both sides. But so we have three colors of grommets for this. Um, they're the gunmetal, which almost looks black, shiny on that side. Um, the nickel, which is the silvery color. And then the antique gold, which is right here. Yeah. So those grommets are very, very well built. They are metal. They come four to a pack, as Cindy said. And, well, we got a sticker on there, but that's okay. So you get a little, um, a little package of those. And I did have that one installed on another piece of fabric. This is two layers, like I said, of marine vinyl. And you screw them on with three tiny little screws. So, when you are installing these, you need to keep track those of those itty bitty little, little tiny screws. screws. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, so this is a slimline magnetic box. So the entire bottom of the box is magnetic. I've got a pin in here and I've got two of these little tiny screws and they stay magnetically stuck to the box so that you're not going to lose them. This is also nice because a lot of us have magnetic pin cushions, sure. but we pin over on one end of our table and then we go over to our sewing machine and sew and where's your pin cushion? Right, right. So I just leave this now next to my sewing machine and I can throw the pins in. Right, and you can close the lid and throw them in your bag and you're off and running, so. Take it to retreat, to class. Sure, sure. Um, the front side of this grommet is um, thick. That gives you that pretty look on the front. The back is like a little flat washer. So I used that with the holes in it to create my um, stencil on my fabric. So I took a pen and I just drew where I needed to have those cutouts. I used that punch one more time, medium size to punch my screw holes, and I used a pair of scissors um, to cut out the inside part. So I was able to get through um, the mm -hmm. foam and both things of fabric and everything, the screws were long enough for yeah. that, so no problem there. No problems there. All right, you want to hand me that other magnetic thing? So I used, oh. <laughs> yeah, I used <laughs> the, the magnetic thing. <laughs> I used the fusible fleece um, in my lunch mat, but I did not use it in my tote bag, but it is wonderful fusible stuff. 
Okay, so let's say that you drop um, a pair of scissors or something down on the floor and you need to pick it up. This is a telescoping magnetic um, pickup and it has a very, very strong magnet. With a twist. Cool. With a twist. I don't want to blind you guys up there, so I'll go this way. But it does have a light on it as well. It has an LED light. So if you need to be able um, to get down and find those tiny little screws that you just dropped, there you go. So it's a great gift for anybody that does mechanical work as well. They drop, sure. drop a bit a nut or screw down into the engine and yep so you need several right you yes, need, you need one, several. To, one to use one to lose one for your travel bag and one to get stolen by your husband so <laughs> yeah. stock up all right so where are we at we're back to bags we're back to bags all right so clearly organized so again i like bags and this is the bag we brought in so if you are going to a venue, to a sporting event, or to a concert, you now have to have a clear bag. And most of them are a gallon size um, maximum. And this has six sizes, and the, from five, to, five by seven to 16 by 16, and the eight by 10 is about a gallon size. And so, um, makes it really easy. They don't care if you have a little, covering down at the bottom I found. They just want to be able to see into the bag. So we did, I did the smallest here and it's got a zipper and we brought in the clear vinyl, this premium clear. This vinyl is so nice. I've used other 16 gauge vinyl and this stuff sews so much better. It has a better hand and you can actually leave the paper on if you want and you can tear it off after you've stitched it. But on these, the only place you're stitching on, directly on the vinyl is just the side here. So I just use, with this vinyl, I just use my normal um, plastic foot. Actually, I use my, my metal foot, I guess, and a little bit longer stitch length and stitched it down and it did just perfect. And then there's a little optional that you can put this little, uh, put a D-ring on it. So you could also put the D-ring on the inside to hold your keys. And then, and this is a great scrap buster. And so then I did the next size up. And this is, I think this is the next uh, two sizes up. But again, a quick and easy, really um, fast, because when you're sewing this part, the top and the bottom, you're encasing the vinyl in the, um, fabric, the cotton fabric, before you stitch it. And then you bring it up. And then Gail, you know, here's the D-rings we brought in. So we brought in these one-inch D-rings. These are really nice. These are a nickel. And um, right, Sally Tomato. And the clear vinyl. Mm -hmm. This vinyl mm -hmm. picks. Talk about my Okay, vinyl. and then I'll talk about Gail's. And then Gail did the largest size, and she added the optional handle. Now, again, you could add a handle to any size. That's not a problem. They just, just give the directions for this size. But you could add a handle, throw it over your shoulder, and take it in. Yes? What size needle do you use on the clear vinyl? What, the question is, what size needle do we use on the clear vinyl? I just used a 90 or 100 titanium. I sew a lot with the titanium needles, um, and usually a 90, 100, and it was fine. Gail, what did you use? Um, I probably used an 80 or a 90. Yeah, I didn't find I needed to do anything out of the ordinary. Um, I did lengthen the stitch yes. slightly um, because you don't want to perforate the vinyl too tightly. But other than that, yeah. um, it just was, it, they went together very, very well. Again, this is a, you could do four or five of these in an afternoon with no problem at all. And because it's got zippers in here, so nothing's going to fall out. Yeah. And again, you could use this for um, swimsuits or things like to the beach if you just wanted little things. And you could, you could do splash fabric up here. Sure. I think that's my next one is going to have splash fabric all over. But I am going to do one with the put the D ring and the loop on the inside to hang my keys. Mm hmm. 
Okay. Are we ready for okay. Hawaiian? Hawaiian. Hawaiian. All right. So the Hawaiian is our embroidery collection for today. So this is from OESD, and this is applique for the embroidery machine. Multi-format fits any embroidery machine. You get 12 different designs and they come in one size right on the usb stick you do um, get a usb stick now so with that you can build some wonderful stuff and we have that over here so as you know structured on the cover we have the four patch kind of um, standard tile where you put four of them together to make a look like this. And the white parts that you see here are the applique fabric and all of the other stuff in here is all thread. And you build them one piece at a time. So you would build that one and then you would build the next one and you would piece them together. The quilting is included in the block. The blocks are about six, six and a half, five and something. Well, it's on the back of that package. It's on the back of it, yeah. Yeah. They are the largest design is 5.52 by 5, 5 yeah. so five and a half by five and a half. So it'll fit in a six by 10 hoop. So if that's your hoop size, that will fit. Um, you can do them in a set of four or you can do them individually and make them into coasters. pot holders, coasters, placemats, whatever. You can piece them together um, on an on point type layout and make them into a table runner, um, whatever you would like. Now, Cindy, go ahead, you did the... So I did the, the coasters, and um, I was having an issue. I mean, this was OESD, so I knew it was a good, well-designed, um, digitized design, and I was having problems with some of the satin stitching, and I changed my needle, and I have a multi-needle, and so I ended up going, okay, if the problem's on the top, it's the bobbin that's, the, that's giving the problem. So I opened up my bobbin case and I had this little tiny piece of thread back there that I was never going to be able to get. But we brought in these nook and cranny cleaning tools. And these are silicone and there's different sizes and they're washable. And so an oil is not gonna bother them. And I stuck one of these in there to my bobbin case, and I got that little piece of thread and pulled it right out, and all my issues went away. Well, wonderful. That was, it was like, oh. It's always uh, nice to have it, a fix that quick. It's right? always nice to have a fix that quick. You can also use it if your um, automatic threader on your machine is not working correctly, you're not getting a whole lot through, or you don't have an automatic threader, is you get that, the thread just started and you can't quite grab it, you can use one of these to grab it and pull it out. Nice. Very nice. So these, these are really, again. Very handy. And it's, it's, my husband wants them too. Yeah, of course. Because they'll be great, they're great in the, on the cars. So you may you. see a larger um, Hawaiian featured up here. And if you have a piece of um, software, uh, computer digitizing software, or if you have a, an embroidery machine that will let you scale, then you can make your designs bigger. So they started out six by six, and I believe these ended up about nine and a half by nine and a half. So by the time we sew them together, they're nine. So I put four of those together, and if it's um, a project that is normally seen on white, I gotta try it on black, because I really, really like color on black. And then you can make either a pillow cover, or a little wall hanging, or something like that. So um, you do have capabilities on many of those machines and if you don't, you know, you can always go to our website and uh, maybe think about a new one, right? <laughs> but the nice thing is that this is really easy with a single needle machine because you only have one, you have two colors. You have your outline in here, but, and then your quilting. And you could do them in the same color too, if you wanted to. Sure. So it's all depends upon what you want to do. Yeah, yeah. Fast and easy. They took 15 minutes each to do, I think. I don't remember. I, just... I, I timed it. It was, <laughs> it was like 15, 20 Not minutes. Not much. All right. And then our last item today is our pattern. 
So this is from Patchabilities, and this is a little raw edge applique wall hanging. Now the pattern is actually one size. They have done kind of a, you know, with and without the hanger feature on the front of the pattern, but they both are exactly the same size, right? Whether you have your, hand, your uh, hanger or not. They are six by 20. And you got a fun little bloom in a boot, right? We're ready for spring. This is part of a series. What you would purchase today would be May, which is the number five of 12. And you're going to get raw edge applique patterns for making this one item. Now you can cut these out with a scan and cut. You can cut them out with scissors. So the patterns come on paper. And if you have a photocopy machine or a scan and cut, you can make them any size you want. You can shrink them, you can make them bigger, um, you can do whatever. So in the pattern, they have gone around all of these items with a blanket stitch. Now I think I'm going to be on this camera right here. Um, but I've chosen some different options, right? So I have some satin stitching around the leaves on mine uh, or my uh, flower petals. I have some straight stitches around the leaves. And then I've gone in and looked at some of the decorative stitches on my particular sewing machine. So again, um, you know, you, play, you pay for all of those fun decorative stitches that you never get to play with. So... Um, I went in and explored, and yes, I, I did a little sample book, and they call it a stictionary, I have been told, so that you um, can see what your machine is capable of. A lot of times I have found where the picture is accurate, but the scale, you really can't tell that the design or the stitch that you're doing really ends up quite a bit wider than the tiny little picture that they put on your machine. So um, I'm going to do a couple little stitches here. So the stitch around that flower was on this machine. It is chapter four and two and two. So this is a needle art stitch. Actually, that is not the right one. We're gonna go for a different one. We're gonna go three and three, three. So it's one of these styles. So it will stitch, and I apologize, I put green thread on a blue fabric, but we'll see what we get. Um, I did change out the quarter inch foot. Don't forget to do that. This is a decorative stitch, so it's gonna have some width. But the stitch is going to go back and forth in place several times, and then it'll move forward and it'll go back and forth in place. And I'm gonna just go for it here. You can't hear me very well, but. That's probably enough. And one thing is don't rush your, let your machine do what it yeah. needs hands, to do. Yeah, almost hands off, right? Because it's gonna go forward and backward and um, stuff like that. Now, certain machines have the ability to actually go from side to side and do your stitches very, very wide. Um, I'm not sure about the capabilities of this particular model, um, but explore is basically my message to you today and see what's out there. So um, you can play around with those and decorative stitches. So I did mine and I do a lot of applique and I like doing applique but when I have this many color changes in this small of a uh, project I like to use um, a good quality invisible thread mm -hmm. so um, from Superior the poly neon the poly that we carry and so I just did a blanket stitch around all of them and then Again, I did it according to the direction, <laughs> and it calls for just a little, the, for the trumpet part to be hand stitched, so I hand stitched, but there was only 12 stitches, well, so there you go. four on each one, so um, quick and easy, and yeah. again, you can do this in an afternoon, Sure, you can do a couple of them in an afternoon, and then we brought in the bloom 
hanger as well. Yes, yes. So I was um, getting there. Now it's you right. had the hanger. It's, it's right, right back here. here. So these are separate, right? So you can purchase the um, pattern and then you can purchase the metal hanger to hang it by. So you just put a little sleeve on the back and you've got a fun little um, hanger on your project, right? It gets you go that way. Chasing the camera. There we go. <laughs> so the hanger is built just like that. And the directions on it tell you how to make the sleeve so that it yeah. will go onto the hanger if yeah. you want the hanger. Sure, sure. So we did keep them separate. That way you don't have to buy multiple patterns if you want to make multiple projects. And uh, if you don't want to use the hanger, then you don't have to purchase that to get the pattern. So they are a separate item. All right, did we have anything that we forgot? I don't think so. I think I don't we, either. I, think, I think we got it all. I think we got it. We had lots and lots of fun this month, as always. And the, the template, you want the template plastic again? Okay. okay. And oh, I think we might have to talk about prizes too. Oh, yes. Okay, where's the. I think I put it right down oh, on this put side. Oh, down here. So the template plastic. So four sheets, 14 by 20. Yes. And it, like I said, it cuts really well. It doesn't leave a jagged edge. Mm -hmm. I've had some template plastic mm. that I get a jagged edge. This, there's no jagged edges. Goes through the scan and cut. Um, really liked that. All right. Any further questions? Doesn't look like it. All right. We are working on getting the flash fabrics up online so they can order them. Okay. Okay. So it sounds like we're adding the splash fabrics very soon. So if you're looking for those, they'll be ready um, as soon as we can get them up. And let's announce our uh, prize winners. So I'll do one and you do one. You can do one. There we you go. Guys, you guys have a, a <laughs> microphone. A microphone. <laughs> oh, well. Yeah, I technicalities, share. right? So this is a little five by five inch um, fabric bundle. This is called a charm pack. And this goes to Deborah Riger, or Rieger. And if you can please let us know by message um, what store you'd like to pick up at or um, contact information, uh, we can get this off to you. So this is... Um, it is, um, it's a pressing. Yes. And this is the fig scent. Okay. They're very light scented. It's called flatter. Flatter, yes. Mm -hmm. And it does really flatten out. Mm -hmm. It's really great for seams, I found, to flatten those seams. Um, and this goes, the winner is Denise Gilbertson. And you can message it to arrange for pickup or for delivery to Andrea at qualitysewing.com. We need their name and what store. To yes, a phone, a phone number and a, a stick store location or how you want it. Or address. Yes. All right. Well, thank you everybody for joining us yes, today. We you. had a lot of fun and we will see you next time around. Have a nice day. Yep.